Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I see you have a nice, small, cozy group, so I anticipate being able to answer and customize this presentation to your needs. But uh, let's get started. As uh, we do move forward with the presentation, I do encourage you all to enter whatever questions uh, come up into this chat, and I believe we will have time to answer them all. So let's move forward. I uh, wanted to introduce PTAC, which is Procurement Technical Assistance Center. If you are here, the chances are that you already know a lot about us or have had communication with uh, one of our counselors. So I do appreciate you being here as you are entering into the world of government contracting. So who we are? Uh, we are a federally funding program under DOD, Department of Defense program. We provide no cost government contracting assistance uh, regarding uh, vendor registration, government marketing research and plan development, proposal evaluation. And today uh, we are gonna be providing support regarding a um, capability statement. Uh, we are located with our host institutions, Kutztown, Lehigh, and Widener Universities. And uh, we also have a location at Philadelphia Navy Yard, so we can meet with you in person or virtually, depending on your company's needs. Uh, we, decide, uh, we serve the following counties, Berks, Bucks, Chester, Delaware, Lehigh, Montgomery, Northampton, and Philadelphia. You can always contact us at aptac at kutztown.edu. Those emails go directly to me, and I do promise I do read them all and respond to them within a day or two, whenever possible. I do encourage you also to go on our website for any updated information relative to upcoming events, government contracting big picture information, and also find a way how to reach us for one-on-one uh, -on -one one of one uh, counseling session with our expert counselors. And do connect with us on LinkedIn for the same information. We would love to see you there as well. Okay, now what is on the agenda today? Well, we're gonna be discussing a capability statement. What is a capability statement? Hopefully we will answer that question thoroughly for you today. Also, why do you need one? How do you create one? Tips and best practices. And I believe we will have plenty of time for Q&A to answer questions relative to your specific needs, whether you have started writing one or you just thinking about contract, the government contracting uh, in general. I am your presenter today. My name is Natasha Borshen. I'm the program manager of Southeast PA PTAC and happy to be part of the team. Today, I am joined by uh, our webinar coordinator for today, and she has been with us for a couple of years now, supporting us in many different capacities, Damilola Fola Walabi, who is going to be fielding your questions. I also see that we, have, we are in presence of one of our counselors, so I do encourage our counselors to join and offer their expertise as well, just in a case I did not mention something. So welcome everybody and um, let's dive into the capability statement. What is a capability statement? In short, it is a resume for your business. It is a one or two page document that most if not all government agencies require uh, before considering you for a particular solicitation. Uh, it is one of the first to do items when you are getting into government uh, government marketing. It is a way to create a first uh, impression. It is an easy and inexpensive but important marketing tool. It is your ticket. Uh, it's kind of a gateway to government contracting in your will, and we will discuss all the way of why that is so. As you are uh, beginning to write your capability statement, I think it's important for you to ask yourself these questions. Where does your company fit in a government contracting landscape? Uh, research that you have done when you were deciding to grow your business through government contracting will help you answer that very question. Um, 
because uh, you will need to put information that agency needs to see. Basically, agency needs to see from that document uh, how your company is going to solve their problems. In other words, try to think like a contracting officer might in order to answer that question. And uh, finally, um, it also offers an opportunity for you to display what do you want them to see about your company? What makes your company stand out from competition? That in government contracting, as you know, competition is not that transparent. So really putting your best foot forward is extremely important. Uh, it also provides a snapshot of your company value and what it brings to the table. Um, it helps agencies narrow down qualified applicants. It solidifies your place as a company worth doing business with. It is a, a really easy branding tool. So putting effort forth into this one or two page document is strongly encouraged. Aside from uh, direct you know, government contracting, um, procurement offices, it also helps initiate prime and subprime relationships. So let's say you have identified a prime company that you would like to uh, work with. Sharing this document really helps prime uh, contractors see what you are bringing to the table. And also one thing to keep in mind is that that document needs to be consistent with your overall uh, company marketing efforts. And we will explain a little bit further as we go. Now, capability statement has a certain set of information blocks that all contracting officers would look for. But to start with, it would be a business description. So um, it's kind of about us section. So you give a brief but descriptive overview of your business. So you should be able to describe what your business expertise are in two to three sentences. It is kind of like a company pitch that you would use uh, during any other networking opportunities, except with an added information on how you would help uh, government meet their goals for particular solicitation. Uh, you know, those opportunities do not come around that often. So being clear, and concise and efficient in delivering that message about your company is extremely important. Also, uh, government wants to know about your company. It wants to know about your uh, ownership information, such as structure. It wants to know whether you're a small business, women-owned business, uh, minority-owned business, veteran-owned, LGBTQ, especially when it comes to city of Philadelphia contracting, um, and so on. So this is a place where you would uh, describe that. Now, furthermore, if you have certifications or that is associated with that structure, this is also the place where you would uh, share this information. And the reason why that is important is because uh, government has a mission of supporting small disadvantaged veteran owned and so on businesses through government contracting and they need to account for it. So letting them know what your company's structure and certifications are uh, helps you answer that question for them. And it puts you in a, it may put you in advantage, so especially if there are certain um, uh, solicitation set-asides that are specific to that particular business structure. Also, this is a, a place where you would answer some of the technical questions when it comes to government contracting. So you would list a UEI number. It is a unique entity identifier. Anyone who has gone through SAMDA.gov registration understand the, the somewhat um, not so easy landscape to navigate in order to get one, but it is necessary for any federal government contracting opportunities. If you have obtained just your UEI number, not along with your cage code, um, it will make you eligible for opportunities, but as a subprime. So if you have gone through a full verification process, you will also be assigned a cage code and it will make you in part procurement ready. So it's very important. Now, if you're, let's say, doing business with uh, the city of Philadelphia, and you have registered as a local business enterprise, LBE. This is also a place where you would uh, put that information. This is, uh, as part of the technical aspect, you would list your NAICS codes. 
And those are um, codes associated uh, with your services and products that you are looking to market to government. And I know we will talk a little bit more where to find them and how to narrow them down, but this is where you would indicate all of those. Uh, PSC codes, they're product and services codes, and unlike NAICS codes, those codes are associated uh, directly with government spending. This is how uh, government categorizes what they spend their money on. It is not necessary as part of your capability statement. However, putting the information on there makes you look like you um, have done your due diligence and you understand what contracting uh, officer may, information they may need uh, for a particular solicitation. On the capability statement, uh, it's certainly very important to indicate your company contact information. So just as you piqued someone's interest about your company with the layout and all this other information you have put in capability statement, uh, guiding them how to get in touch with you is extremely important. So please triple check, triple check the uh, uh, email, any business phone number, website information, and indicate the primary contact and name for, uh, for your company very important and please keep that updated as it changes and we will talk about tips and tricks about keeping things updated so we will discuss that a little bit more all right so yes uh, let's reflect back on NAICS codes so north american industry classification system as we had mentioned we say NAICS codes a lot but hardly ever spell them out this is exactly what they mean and uh, I, one of the tips that I would like to offer when you're listing your NAICS codes, please do make sure that they're associated with the core business of your company. Having too many NAICS codes that are not, um, they don't seem connected based on your company information can put you in a disadvantage because it can be kind of a situation where you kind of look like a mas uh, you know, master of all trades, but uh, uh, actually it's a, what is it? Jack of all trades and master of none, pardon me. And uh, so you really want to uh, narrow them down and do keep in mind that those NAICS codes, uh, you can change them to accommodate them uh, uh, according to a particular solicitation that you are going after. Once again, this is a living, breathing document. It requires updates. And as your company goals shift or as you are looking to fulfill a particular solicitation, uh, really having a focused capability statement really helps. Another tip that I would like to offer relative to NAICS codes is that do check back. They do change from time to time. This particular source for your NAICS codes will list what those NAICS codes might have been in 2017 or 2012. So it gives me an indication that they may change in on approximately five year cycle. And they also get added as the industries change and, and the industries grow and change. So, you know, for example, like social media might not have been a thing uh, 20 years ago, but it is today. So they have added NAICS codes uh, relative to a particular industry. And like I said, as your goals change, make sure you go back and revisit those. It is very easy to want to develop a capability statement, just kind of like send it out without looking for updates. But I think it is very um important and prudent to make the effort of updating them. Like we said, PSC codes are not necessary, but it is helpful information for um, procurement offices. And I do suggest uh, using them. This is a source for a government issued manual. It is not as user friendly, but if you can dig through it and find relevant and associated PSC codes, I would enter them in there. So we can also help you locate those as well as you need. Okay, so there are some other sections that are important when creating a capability statement. Past performance. And uh, this is where you highlight relevant experience related to government contracting. So if you have had contract in the past, you would list project name, give the agency name that has issued that particular solicitation and given you an award, and also year of completion. Uh, if you have many of those, I suggest uh, highlighting the most recent or more 
uh, most relevant to a particular solicitation that you're going after. Another section are differentiators, and it's also um, standard to see that on there. And it's also known as special capabilities, right? So it is your unique selling points. It is what uh, makes your company stand out from others. And uh, so it's important to list concise list of defining aspects of your business, right? So this is where you get to shine and stand out. It should show how your company will fulfill government needs and how they will do it better than the rest of the competition. So this is not the things where you put, uh, don't put things that you do here. Put, uh, rather put things, exceptional ways in which you do them. It's kind of the best way I can describe this. If you have any awards or recognitions, um, like I said, this is a marketing piece. So um, list them here. List your awards by date um, and um, it's your time to shine, right? So why not show it off? This is, this is your show piece. Okay. And so now I'm gonna go through some tips. So these are kind of just technical aspects, but there are quite a few tips that we can offer um, related to capability statement. Um, just like any marketing approach, do consider who you are marketing to. Is it a local, is it a state, is it a federal um, level of solicitations? Is it agency to agency? Is Are you looking to go after primes? And so make sure that you ac accommodate the capability statement based on who uh, you would market to, right? So let's say, some information that is important to a local government contracting may not be important for federal. So make sure that you make those adjustments. And also let your accomplishments speak for yourselves. A government really likes to work with the uh, established businesses. And I know this might be a challenge when you're a startup, but uh, highlight your special products or services and uh, prioritize your big win contracts. So if you did have a contract in the past, you know, prioritize them according to the one that makes you look the best and the most accomplished, right? Uh, list your tangible skill set because they sell better, right? So don't be vague, be very specific in terms because the contracting office or procurement offices, they want to have a pretty clear idea of what they are, what they'll be able to count on you for and what types of solicitations they want to consider you for. So uh, really understand your bandwidth uh, of your company and be very tangible about that. This is uh, much better than a business card. So if you're in a networking event, do have a capability um, statement handy. Very important. Uh, handed if you, uh, you can hand your business card as well, but your contact information should be on there. And it really gives everybody at glance an understanding of your company in the best possible light. Some additional tips that we can avoid, like once again, focus on facts, not fluff. You know, people do not want to rummage through to get to the essence and the core of what you are looking to offer to the government. So be, be specific and be focused. And uh, let's see, use a clean and visually pleasing template. Uh, there's always this temptation of entering too many graphics. So I do suggest that uh, you really kind of, if you do insert an image and it serves a, a clear purpose of enhancing, not hiding the information that is necessary. So it's just really for the aesthetics and to support your overall message. Keep it updated, like you said with your best and uh, most relevant contracts highlighted first. Uh, only include necessary graphics like logos, uh, certification stickers, and, uh, and so forth. So like I said, be conservative with graphics and be um, intentional with them, right? Uh, so have a template, but customize it for a particular solicitation response, like I mentioned. So you can have one kind of, if you recall applying for a job, and then you have one resume that you have all of your past experience on, right? And uh, so you're going for a particular job, and then you kind of tailor it 
uh, for that particular job. So this is kind of your use the capability statement for as well. So make sure you customize it for an agency that you are doing possibly direct marketing with or a particular solicitation that you are looking to go after. Uh, if you're using a printed and hard copy, uh, I do suggest you make it double-sided, right? Because how often you get a piece of paper, you flip it over and it's blank, right? So that may feel like a little bit of a letdown. So while we encourage to have concise information on one page, I say use that back page wisely. Maybe enter a QR code that will add, lead directly to your company website. It's also an opportunity to show off more um, contracts you have had with or special skills or additional awards. So if you do have a it, it, find yourself in a situation and now in a post-COVID era, I think in-person networking situations are, are becoming more abundant. So um, it's a good idea to have them printed on a nice stock paper as well. That's another tip I would like. Uh, don't make it flimsy, uh, make it last, right? So, and have a PDF version uh, for digital distribution. Now, I know there are many different formats to uh, save, view, and create those, but we always suggest having a PDF uh, version and it has become an industry standard of how uh, procurement offices would like to receive those. You want to, well, you want them to be able to open it and view it, right? Because you do not want to get dismissed on that technicality. So PDF version, have them. Okay, let's see. So we also talked about limiting number of NAICS codes. And I also suggest just a brief description of what they are. So the contracting officer doesn't have to go back and refer to the chart and look for them. Uh, also, uh, make sure that your capability statement matches your overall marketing efforts from website, social media, etc. Because, you know, one of the things that contracting officers look for is if a company is just after their money or they have the actual expertise and experience and background and intention of fulfilling uh, uh, that particular solicitation. So do invest in a website, uh, have some digital footprint on there because contracting offices are no different like the rest of us. They will Google you and they will want to see what you look like, uh, maybe even look up your reviews, you know, because those are, so your capability statement should be consistent in your color scheme, in using your logos, images, services you offer, and so on. I also want to know, how you have functioned in a commercial space, right? They're not just considering, you know, how much experience. They want to know that you're expert at that thing that you're looking to market to them. Uh, to keep make it look updated, I do suggest having a QR code leading to your website on there because it's very easy, right? So it just we all do it. It's almost hard to resist when you see a QR code. You almost want to like scan it just to see what's behind it, right? So. Um, it's, it's a good little trick to lead people to your website. Two column format is a good way to provide a lot of and easy to read information. So I know it seems like, how can I put all this information on one page, but the way you organize them and their templates out there, uh, it's, it's a good way to do that, right? And I will show you some examples of that too. For contact information, uh, if at all possible, try not to use a generic email because it tells people uh, immediately that you may not have a website. So, and I know you might have developed your website after you've had your email, um, but I do suggest having an email associated with your website. It will make you look like a more established um, business. Also, proofread, 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 proofread. It will, you know, spelling mistakes, it will make, uh, make it look sloppy. It will make it look like someone did not pay attention. So uh, I always like to use another set of eyes. And if you need us to be that, we are happy to do that. It's a free service that we offer to help you become procurement ready. And if you're already in a procurement uh, space, if you want us to look over updates, we are more than happy to do that. It is free. So it is something that we offer uh, as part of our services. 
So let's just take a look at an example. So this is a capability statement and it kind of has all the components that we had talked about, right? So now that you see it kind of laid out, it does not seem as uh, overwhelming, but uh, hopefully you have your logo so, so far. It has a business summary. Uh, it should be couple word paragraph. It should list products and services you're looking to offer and be concise and particular. So I know there are some of you that offering both products and services. So you can <coughs> almost have two capability statements, uh, one focused on services, one on products. Capabilities and differentiators. So, so in case of capabilities, they want to know what tangible resources you tap into in order to fulfill a particular solicitation. So list facilities, list equipment, list of resources like your, you know, staff qualifications, uh, kind of work that you have performed, uh, state of the art equipment. So, and then we talked about the differentiators, right? It's not what you do. It is what you do exceptionally well, what you do differently and more efficiently than anyone else out there. Now, past performance, uh, I know this is uh, something if you are just starting out, it might be uh, difficult to fulfill. So in a Q&A, we're going to elaborate on how to overcome that and what can you use um, instead. And uh, let's see. So, yeah. And then on the left column, column you see contact information kind of lead with that. Um, next goes, we talked about don't put too many, five to 10. I know it's hard. You're like doing research and you're finding all of these things the government wants to buy and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I can do that. But, you know, have a focused strategy on what you're looking to offer. And this is an example of one of what it looks like, right? This is just one of them, right? So, if, you know, you may need some updates, they've used logos, not too many graphics, but you instantly know that this is a transportation company, right? They help you with logistics, right? Core and the differentiators and, um, and so forth. But, you know, use your style, make sure that it makes you stand out and it makes sure that you are, um, is it consistent with, you? like I said, overall marketing strategy. So if someone looks at uh, capability statement, they go to a website and it looks nothing like that, or your website is unfinished, right? So make sure that those two are matched. Website, even if you have just a front page, you're not completely uh, finished, but it's good to have one, right? So it's kind of like, you know, you go knock on a door, you can't open the door. So if you have a website listed on there, they go there and there is nothing um, for them to uh, to see. So I know I have talked quite a bit and I do, you know, we have a nice group of about 13 participants. So we do have plenty of time uh, to answer any of your questions that you may have. And I have prepared some as you're thinking of yours, but um, I would love to give you a chance. Dami, do we see any questions so far in the chat? Um, we don't have any at the moment. Okay. Yeah, maybe they could unmute themselves on stage. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can you can type them, you can unmute yourself, you can raise your hand and Dama will uh, let you speak. But one of the commonly asked question is question related to past performance. Like, what do you do, you know, when um, you don't have past performance? You're just entering a government contracting world. And in generally speaking, yes, government contracting agency do like to see past performance, especially for more complex solicitation. Um, but when you do not have one, uh, it's kind of like busy building your resume, right? And making yourself even more procurement ready. So uh, what I suggest is really kind of reading through different solicitation and find the ones that are appropriate for you. So scope of work, we sometimes spell out. They will want to see, they will want to know your past performance. Um, and some solicitations are not so heavy on a past performance. So they just want to see that you are able to deliver what they're and meet their need. So sifting through and finding appropriate um, 
solicitations to kind of hit the ground running. And <clears throat> excuse me, and hit the ground running. I'm just going to take a sip of water. My apologies. That's what happens when you talk a lot. And also, you know, there's nothing wrong with subcontract or teaming up with uh, other companies. So let's say you don't have past performance, but you've done your due diligence. You have registered yourself in SAM. You have your UEI cage code. You have different certifications. Many companies would be willing to, pro uh, to partner with you uh, if they see that you're bringing a lot to the table. So this is as your past performance, you can list your subcontracting opportunities, but it's also important to be transparent that that was a subcontracting opportunity uh, that you, or joint venture, or whatever the case may be. And so these are, these are the two ways to kind of uh, over, overcome that. And if any of my colleagues know that another tip that they can offer, you know, I do welcome them to join that conversation. Um, but in, in looking, so maybe there's also, there's other ways that you can, you may not have a, a past performance, but you know, you can add or like success story section. So if there is something that you have done in your business that you're extremely proud of, and it makes you shine, you know, that's, uh, that's a good place to kind of supplement for that uh, information. And like I said, understanding difference uh, between RFQs and RFPs, requests for quotes, requests for proposals. More complex requests for proposals are more likely to look for that past performance. Um, but uh, that's, you know, some RFQs may not be so in, um, focused on that, right? Okay, so I do see some questions. Uh, as a page, should you, add the capability statement as a page on your website. I have seen companies do that, right? So they would have a specific tab. Well, if you function in both uh, commercial and government sector, the, some companies have added a tab for government contracting, and this is where they put their capability statement. So it is not a bad idea. And also making a QR code matching that is, uh, is a good little tool. So yes, if you find an appropriate spot to do that, Sarah, um, you know, I think it's a good idea. Okay, the, and then another question we have is the, the capability statements you mentioned tailored to a statement to each government agency. So when bidding, I would attach the CS to each bid. So um, you can, and sometimes solicitations uh, may specifically ask for them and sometimes they do not. Right, but it's not a bad idea, and something it's a standard practice to attach your capability statement. Um, and I have worked specifically with one client who was submitted, she wasn't considered for that particular solicitation. However, that particular agency has reached back to her saying, Okay, we saw that you're offering these other things, so we have this other solicitation, so it's a good idea to include. Yeah, or yeah, you can upload your capability. The question is, um or do I upload the CS to SAM.gov? You can upload your CS to, uh, capability statement to SAM.gov. It is not a bad idea, uh, especially if you have narrowly focused one. And like I said, make sure you keep it updated. This is one of those things that, you know, can easily fall off the radar, right? So uh, kind of make a, a tickler file or note to yourself to keep that updated. Yeah. Do you know some great resources to find examples that apply to my business? You know, uh, Sarah, I do. So do reach out to us. If you don't already have one of our counselors, we will match you with one. We really do offer customized assistance for your particular capability statement. We want you to look good. We want you to enter government contract your world prepared. So uh, I will let you have, have my email and Dami in a chat. If you can put all of our contact information, I would really appreciate that. So everybody can email me. If you don't already have a counselor, I will uh, assign you. We have uh, quite a few counselors with a, a lot of expertise in that particular field. So it will not be a problem at all to help you find examples of customized uh, capability statement and also help you craft one, so. All right, very good. So does anyone have any questions or, you know, I'm one of some of our counselors that might be present. If I had missed something, if you want to chime in, and now is your chance. 
you know, to offer some other great advice and input. But, uh, you know, I am always available. We are always here to help you. I also want to let you know that uh, this presentation, as well as the recording of it, uh, will be made available to you in a couple of days. So I will respond to all the participants, providing them that information. Yes. Yeah, so the, yeah, this is my yeah, email. Yeah. And also, if you email uh, ptac at kutstan.edu, that email also comes um, to me. Kimia, she has a question. Is your suggestion to keep to a one page? If you can fit uh, uh, all this information that's essential to one page, it is always a good idea. And, it, and keep it aesthetically pleasing and have all the information that is necessary. It's a good idea. Like I said, the only time I would suggest having a um, having a two pager is if you are printing it out and so like i said so whenever someone flips a paper they don't want to look at a blank page so this is also you know place that you can offer you know at load with some supplement some uh, supplemental information that will make your company shine so this is that's the only time i would suggest but if you're um distributing a PDF will in this day and age, you will find yourself doing most of, I do suggest keeping it to one page, uh, especially with this essential information. You know, any uh, special uh, past performance, extended past performance description can go on the second page, but it really needs to serve a purpose. Essential information needs to go on the front page. I hope that answers your question. Okay. And, you know, feel free also to unmute yourself. Can you guys give me an idea of where you are in your government contracting journey? You know, I think it will be helpful for us to know. Um, did you did you just start? You can also answer in a chat. Does Do you have uh, a capability statement currently? If you do not, like I said, do reach out and we will help you craft one. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, feel free to reach out if you need support or help there. Yeah, okay, very good. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, very good. And Naima, I know we are working on your capability statement. I see some, I'm happy to see some of my clients here. So I appreciate you joining for this session and I'm happy to follow up with you uh, further down the road. So yeah, if you feel like I have missed something or there's a question that comes to mind, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You know how to find us. And um, okay, okay, thank you, Naima. She's working on it. <laughs> okay, good, good. I'm glad this was helpful to you. Uh, I know I've provided you with some samples. So I'm hopes, like I said, we are also happy to work one-on-one -on -one for customized. But if uh, you know, try to keep, uh, try, really be conscious of, you need help, Larry? Not a problem. Do you, are you located? Yeah, so if you're located in one of those counties that I have listed, you are welcome to um, reach out to me and I will sign you a counselor. If you're not, it's not a problem. I'm glad you have joined this session, but I will help you find a BTAC counselor for your particular area, so do find us. That's exactly what we are here for. Okay, good, good. Net Larry's in Philadelphia. So yes, I can definitely help you help you there. If no one else has, doesn't have any questions, I would like to conclude this uh, session. I appreciate you joining on a gloomy Monday morning. So, <laughs> and uh, I hope this helps you on your government contracting journey. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.